now from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning and welcome to Facing South Florida. Later in the show, we will look at what ICE is doing and what it should be doing during this pandemic. You may not think what happens in detention centers like Chrome have a very real impact on you. You may not care about those folks being detained, but trust me when I tell you, it does matter. But first, our nursing homes and assisted living facilities. Nearly 100 nursing home residents have died in Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties from COVID-19. These facilities continue to be at risk. So I spoke to Jared Moskowitz, the state's emergency management director, about a plan to go into some nursing homes and conduct much needed testing. We're going to be doing upwards of 500 tests per day, uh, continuing to find different facilities and going in and, and swabbing people and testing them. We'll continue to try to increase that again as we can find additional uh, capacity to do so. Uh, but this is extremely important. There are 2,100 nursing facilities around the country right now uh, that have uh, COVID cases. Uh, I saw one in particular in, in Virginia, a very sad story. 42 people have died at one facility, 126 of the 162 people that live there uh, are positive. And here in the state of Florida, obviously, you know, we're, we're ground zero, if you will, for nursing homes and ALS. We got a significant amount of those uh, that, uh, of the ones that exist around the country, which is why we were one of the first states to close these facilities, first limit facilities to visitors and then close them to visitors. And unfortunately, obviously, some of this stuff came in uh, via staff, even though we had some of the most stringent screening uh, around the country. And so uh, we've been extremely vigilant uh, with our nursing homes. I mean, I can tell you, just so you know, I mean, we've went and visited 3,874 long-term care facilities um, and we've had teams respond to 93, uh, uh, strike teams go into 93 facilities when there have been issues. Uh, to give you some additional statistics, uh, we've sent based on contracts that DM acquired 153 nurses uh, to these facilities to help out. And we've done a number of ambulance uh, transfers of 199 uh, ambulance in use. Now, PPE is extremely important in these facilities, extremely important. So if we wanna talk about being able to stop the spread, uh, this is really a first in DEM in which we're sending stuff to private companies. I can tell you after hurricanes, the government doesn't just send stuff to, to private companies. This is really the first time, private hospitals, private nursing homes, private ALF. So, what we've sent to the private long-term care facilities is we've sent 2.8 million masks uh, to these facilities. We've sent 362,000 face shields, 160,000 gowns, and 428,000 gloves. And we'll continue to fill mission requests as they come in. And even without mission requests, we're gonna to continue to try to push stuff directly to these facilities and push stuff to the county staging area so that stuff can be locally there in the event there's an exigent need. How many uh, long-term care facilities, whether you define it as a nursing home, an ALF, how many of those facilities in the state of Florida have tested, have had individuals, either employees or residents, test positive for COVID-19? Yeah, I don't know the, the, the number offhand of how many facilities have had it, but the answer is, Jim, it's been a bunch. Okay, I mean, well, let's just, let, let, let's be honest. There, there's a lot of facilities that have had either uh, a, a, a nursing home patient uh, someone who lives there that's positive or or a staff member that's positive and I, and we should also be honest that trend is going to continue okay this is something that is happening nationally um, and, and it is a trend that's going to continue even though these facilities are locked down even though these facilities have no visitors even though their staff is being screened even though the vendors are being screened uh, you, we know that there are people who are asymptomatic and as a result can pass all the screenings. Uh, and, and so, you know, even with PPE, sometimes there, there are things that are, are happening. There is no such thing as, you know, these things are airtight, airtight. And so, you know, we, we've been sending uh, the PPE down to the front lines. We've been sending that to the nursing homes. 2.8 million masks uh, have gone to these facilities. Uh, and we'll continue to obviously look at the mission requests that come in and we're going to continue to push stuff down. Uh, to, to the county level. And we're going to try to con in increase our Sentinel program, which is basically what we're doing uh, with the Guard, which is to go into these facilities and test people. That data is extremely important because what you do is you want to find out even before there's, a, there's an issue that we read about in the newspaper, what we want to find out is what is the problem in these nursing homes. So we're going in the nursing homes, by the way, that don't just have a positive case. 
we're going into other nursing homes to find out what is the situation in that nursing home? Are there people that are positive there? And if there are, are they asymptomatic, which is why no one checked on them, and, or B, what percentage uh, of that population may be uh, positive but asymptomatic? I mean, these are in, in, important things to understand of what's going on in these facilities. And you talked about testing and being more aggressive in going into some of these facilities and, and doing testing, and you have the ability to, I think the number you used was, was it 500 a day or 500 a week? 500 a day. Is 500 an adequate number in your, in your mind? Is 500 adequate? No, I mean, no, everyone would like to test as many people as we possibly humanly can. Right now, that's limited by the, the national infrastructure. So look, we just launched this program at 500 a day. Does that mean two weeks from now we'll be at 500 a day? No, I fully expect that the program is going to continue to increase. Uh, but, but at the same time, does that mean everybody who either works or lives in a nursing home, every single solitary person is going to get tested by the time this program's done? No, that doesn't mean uh, that that's the case. What we're going to do is we're going to test a significant amount of people, and then the data will tell us what, what, our, what, our, what our problems look like and where our, our issues are. And so, uh, just like Jim, not every person in every state is being tested. It's the same thing, right? We're focusing on people who are either symptomatic uh, or have been around someone with COVID-19. And so, uh, we're th that's where the program is starting uh, in these nursing homes and these ALFs. Uh, but then we're going to continue to expand to test people who uh, show no symptoms to give us an idea of what is going on uh, on in these nursing homes. And by the way, I'm not aware that any other state is doing the sort of uh, testing that we're doing, where we're literally going in with the National Guard in these facilities uh, and swabbing people so that we can get this vital information. I mean, this is about saving lives, right? This is about identifying the problem. And that's why we push down all this life-saving PPE to the front lines. I mean, we, we are doing and bringing these resources to the table and being aggressive but as we all know, because it's been reported every single hour of every single day for the last month as we, everybody sits home uh, and hears the news, right, is that there's limitations in PPE around the country and there's limitations in testing capacity. When we come back, we look inside the ICE Detention Center. 